Welcome into Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest. I am joined by defensive lineman Will Golston. Will, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for letting me come. Oh man, you're one of my favorite guests, and uh, we got a lot to talk about. And you're lucky you came on after a win. Those are the best kind of shows, oh, right? Oh man, tell you, yeah, that's the best. That's the best. <laughs> Everything else is ah. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, you. So you got the you drew the the long straws man, to come on here. I'll take it. Um, okay, so first of all, five straight wins against Atlanta. It is the longest win streak against a divisional opponent since the realignment in 2002. That's pretty crazy. What is it about Atlanta that you guys have had their number lately? I don't know, but I'm I'm glad we got it. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. that's that's pretty cool. The realignment is that when it was NFC Central. Yeah, yeah. So the different that's division. Crazy. Yeah. So this is the team five five straight wins against them. It shows how hard it is to beat division opponents that many times in a it row. It is. It is. It is because you play them so consistently, they'll know your personnel just the same as you know. It. So in the last game was really hard. Hard fought. They came out and they didn't give up and they didn't quit. And that's what that franchise does. Yeah, and what is the significance of this win? How does it feel in the locker room knowing that it was for the division lead, even though I know it's early in the season, a lot mm -hmm. of football to be played for the division lead. It's a division opponent. It's, you know, wanting your first home win. It's, you know, when you have a two-game losing streak, knowing three is a number you do not want to get to. Yeah. How big did this feel? It was huge. Uh, all of the points that you've made, just for it to be the first win at home, uh, that's cool to be able to set ourselves up to be first in the division. And then just to just have that win after losing two because you don't want to lose. You don't want to lose one. So, shoot, to uh, come in, and it's all home games that we lost. So we had to come in and represent for the crew. I think I saw that Tom Brady hasn't lost three games in a row since 2002. Wow. Um, which is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> what did you sense about him after losses or especially after maybe consecutive losses? What is he like? What is – it make the locker room feel like just in general now that this team has had the success it's had you've been on teams that didn't have that kind of success mm -hmm. what is the different feeling after those losses now on a team that expects so much uh, from the outside looking in this preparation for the game is already intense and it just intensifies more and it trickles down into the team you see it onto the offense and when the offense does it the defense have to step up it's just uh, the type of non-verbal leadership that you see uh, it's really something to look at. And uh, you guys were pitching a, a shutout through three. Man. Oh, yeah. I know. I'm sure you wanted it. I, when, does it start entering in your mind at some point when you're looking up there like, ooh? I think when you think about it, it always goes away. That's, yeah. that's me. I'm like, oh, yeah, we got a chance to get this goose egg because it's really hard in the NFL to stop a team from scoring at least three points. Yeah. And like I said, that's a really good team. They showed they like they showed themselves out. You know, they they came out, kept punching. I wish we would have put that goose egg on them for sure, but we got another chance. What felt like it changed in the fourth quarter to besides you just looking at the fact that there is a zero on the scoreboard? Yeah. Um, let's see. I would try to make an analogy. So you know, when you're in the fight and you're punching, you're punching, you're punching, you're not looking up. You're just punching. And then when you look up, that little bit of hesitation can cost you a knockout blow. So I think that's what really happened. Like we were just head down, punching, 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 hesitate just that little instance. And, you know, the game didn't, it turns out they scored, you know. So we just got to keep punching. I love how you started that with, you know, when you're fighting and punching and I'm like, no, well, <laughs> I don't know that. Oh, I don't know that. You've never been in a fight? I mean, the closest thing was when I did jujitsu with you. Wow. <laughs> That's the closest, but I love that to you, this was this analogy of like, you know, like looking at me, like, like yeah. you, you're going to totally relate to this. I, 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 really, I really enjoyed that. Um, I think that you think I'm a lot tougher than I actually am, which I'll take. I appreciate it. How about this, uh, this Falcons team? We knew they were going to run the ball. Like it's one thing where, you know, every NFL team wants to get the run game established. Like every week you hear, oh, keys to the game, stop the run, establish the run. Like mm -hmm. every time, but to know that that was what this team was going to do no matter what it felt like. What was that like for you guys as a D-line in preparation, and how do you feel like you handled it? It was fun, but the preparation was crazy because they have a, a unique zone. So they flat zone right now, fast, fast, fast. If you remember back in the day when 49ers were running that zone, they have that same concept. So practicing for it was, they gave us a lot of heck out there. But um, in the game, it, the way we practiced made it slow down a little bit. I feel like we, they did get 150 yards rushing, but. Yeah, tally here or there. I think we did our job in the interior D line. 
Yeah, I do feel like that stat was misleading when you yeah. just look at how many yards. Does that did it feel that way for you guys? After watching it, yeah, like just watching it with the film, watching the film just now, and like uh, talking with Casey and everybody else, I feel like we did our. It's, we could definitely improve, no doubt. Uh, but we did. I feel like we did our jobs. I feel like we did it enough. Plus, they have an extremely fast quarterback, and he was running a couple of. He has quite a bit of those yards, though. So. Yeah, so now knowing you will face them again, what were the biggest takeaways for the next time for you guys? One, you know they're not going to quit. You know they're going to come out hard every single snap, and there's no room for hesitation. Two is we got to be able to fix those little mistakes, uh, be able to hold ourselves accountable for this game here, and just look at it because you know they're going to run. You know they got the same concept because they had plays that work, so they're going to run those plays that work again to see if you can stop it. And if you can't stop it, they're going to keep on running the same play. Which has to be the most frustrating thing. We're talking to defensive lineman Will Golston. Five sacks on the day for the defense. Uh, probably not a stat we would have expected when it is a team that runs yeah. all the time. Uh, so tell me why you think you guys were able to get that kind of a stat and the fact that it's five different guys. You had so many different people on the defense getting in there for that. And, and not to mention, there were so many tackles for loss, even separate from sacks. Mm -hmm. How were you guys able to get to Mariota, bring him down, and even just be in the backfield so much? The one thing I got to say first is three of those sacks out of the five came from that interior D-line. Let's go. You know, so shout out to Not like guys. we biased or anything. You know, you know, <laughs> you know it's the interior D-line. Yeah. But um, it was amazing to see everybody flying around. I think that's just really what it was. Like, uh, the challenges that we were we got from our coaches, you know, just go out there, have fun, be the players you can be. And you saw everybody flying around, getting to the ball, trying to take the ball out, just giving a hundred and ten percent effort every single snap. I think that's really what got everybody going, got the juices flowing. You brought up the interior D line getting sacks and Explain how exciting that is for you guys, how hard that is to do, and what it says about this D-line that that is something you guys are capable it of. It is so hard to get a sack in the 3-4 because you either have four hands or two hands on you, or you get a slide or you get some help. Uh, but we, both our nose guards, we got Vita got a sack, Deidre got a sack, Logan got a sack. Logan got the juice, man. He, he's been rolling. But um, it's really hard, in my opinion, to get a sack. You just got to keep going. Keep hustling. Yeah. You know? don't, don't give up. Yeah, it, never. It'll come. It'll open never. up. Well, and heck, I mean, we, we've we even seen Vita drop back in coverage this season. Right. I w <laughs> drop back and get a forced fumble. I know that had to hurt my man Aaron Jones, though. Oh, yeah. I can't. I mean, and what, it, it, didn't it was him and Devin him? at the same time hitting him? Or, oh, yeah. It's oh. like one. I would have fumbled. Held yeah. him up. <laughs> and boom. I would have not only fumbled, I would have lateraled. Like, here, somebody else take this. I don't this. want this anymore. Uh, you brought up Logan Hall, and now, yeah, he's got a sack. He had a tackle for loss. Mm -hmm. um, I saw you know, using him in multiple places, and, again, it is a game we're also being asked to run stop, which maybe isn't going to be what he's most naturally mm -hmm. built for compared to, say, a Vita Vea. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, tell me what you've seen from him on the pass rush, the run stopping, his overall game, and now five games into his career where you've seen him progress already. I think he just has a lot of growth in his confidence as well. I think that's all that he's missing was missing at first. So you see him, he's in there, he's fighting in the run. He might not be like a, a big 320 guy, but he's in there fighting at, at the run. He's definitely had to juice when he's pass rushing and he's consistently trying to grow. He's not complacent. Like when you get a rookie, some rookies would be like, oh, I know what I'm doing, I got here. But he really tries to learn and grow from everybody. And that's a beautiful thing. I hopefully he continues that throughout his career. I think he'll play really well. How much do you feel responsible for helping a guy that is a rookie coming in and learning the position? How much are you somebody that's a lead by example or, you know, lead by words? Like, what's, what do you think of as your role now that you've been here a, a hot minute? <laughs> uh, yeah, a hot minute. But um, I like to lead by example. But when a question is asked, I want to give them all the information I can because I don't like a gray area in my explanations. I want you to know exactly what I'm talking about exactly what I mean. So you can't say, hey, you told me like this. No, I told you exactly what to do. I didn't give you no room to think about nothing. Just do this, you get. And he, it works with him sometimes, but he also takes the advice from Nacho. He also takes the advice from Vita. Like in our whole room, we, we bounce ideas everywhere. So it's no set, all right, this is the tone. This is how we're going to do it. It's always a way to get it done. And I know that you guys lost uh, several members of the defense towards the end of the game. You already were without Logan Ryan. You mm -hmm. were already without Akeem Hicks. Mm -hmm. And then you end up losing Carlton and Sean Murphy Bunting and Mike Edwards at some point. Yeah. Um, first of all, it had to be some flashbacks of last year where all of a sudden that secondary was dropping like flies. Um, 
what did it what does that do to a defense and even if it's a guy like you that it's not necessarily your position that you're losing somebody but just as so many different guys are having to come in and step up on the defense what is that like in the moment for all of you in the moment it's uh you can't really think about it. it's just like a bullet flying past you in the war you gotta keep going keep pushing forward because you got the next man up concept so everybody who dresses me personally i believe and have 100 percent confidence in them because I've seen you practice. You got the nod from the coach. You got to be prepared. You know that this is our livelihood. This is our profession. So, in the game, I'm not worrying about. I'm like, okay, next man up. Let's do it. But now that we got time to look back, I'm like, dang, we are missing some key players. I hope them guys tough. Mm -hmm. You know, throw some dirt on it. That'd be all right. <laughs> throw some dirt on it. Sounds like my southern grandparents used to say. <laughs> um, Antoine Winfield is a guy that uh, threw some people in the dirt this game. That Ball. guy was everywhere. Right, balling. Eight tackles, uh, sack, force fumble, tackles for loss, stuff in the stat sheet like crazy. And I think I saw he gave the pregame speech out on the yeah, field. Yeah, he did. Is that his first time? No, it's not. No? But he was <laughs> – the, the juices that he got, the energy he got giving that speech, it was, it was cool. It was cool there. Yeah. yeah. I, tell me about what you saw from him in his game and just what he – has come to mean at this point to this defense so quickly in his career. You guys got to really take a deep look. I'm probably, you probably already have, but take a deep look at the evolution of Antoine and how he's consistently got better every single year in every single game. You can see the difference in his swagger. You can see the difference mm. in when you're hitting somebody. I'm, like, I'm watching. I'm like, dang, look, yeah, because he, he's he feeling it. He's he, feeling he, himself he feeling, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and that's what he's probably, yeah, he's a ball hawk. No matter what, he get into the ball with a tackle with his hands, but he gonna be around the ball. I like that in the safety. Yeah, for sure. Do you feel like you have that swagger out there? No, I'm just out there trying to beat the man in front of me. Yeah. I, it's a lot more I would say, but no, no. I, I don't think it would be nice. <laughs> not radio appropriate. Yeah, it's not radio appropriate. <laughs> so that's uh, you have a little bit more of a, a, a mean spirited oh, out there man, as I compared am, to a swagger. I am not trying to be nice at all out there. It's so funny because you're just the nicest guy for for anyone listening. Will's the the guy. He's so nice. Like, listen, you can hear his little chuckle. You know, he's a great dude. And how do you flip this switch? I don't understand. You really want to know? I would like so, yes. So I don't honestly, tend to ask on here when I don't want to know. Um, I just I'm so shocked. I know it's football. I know I play D line. I know there's an offensive line, but I get so upset that they're trying to block me. I promise <laughs> you. I know it sounds insane, but I... How rude. Man, like, you really trying to block me with everything you got? No. Just, and so it just irritates you? Me, sir. Yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs> I've been so irritated. So, note to self, everybody out there, do not block Will. If it's in the, <laughs> the grocery store line or the drive through just let him through, man. You know? <laughs> That's amazing. All right, we still have more coming up here on Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest with defensive lineman Will Golston brought to you by Frontier and Hooters. This is Buccaneers Radio. Welcome back into Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest. I am joined by defensive lineman Will Golston. Uh, do you know the stat that you got this last week in terms of the franchise history? Hmm. Kind of because I read it, but I want to say no. Well, you just want me to read it? That's <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so, since you have no idea what I'm about to say, you passed Warren Sapp for the most games played by a defensive lineman in franchise history, and you're now 10th most games of anybody in what? franchise history. I didn't know that part. Oh, you didn't know the second no. half? Good. At least I got to deliver some exciting news. Um, so, yeah, so you've now played more games than any other D lineman in Bucks franchise history and you are at the 10th most games of anyone in Bucks franchise history. Sheesh. What, how? Tell me, tell me the, tell me your ways, your secrets. How have you been able to, first of all, what does this stat mean to you to hear that? Like when you hear that read out loud, what does that mean? That's a lot of durability, man. I, <laughs> I know I take some hits, but wow. You said 10th out of anybody yeah. on the, wow, that's big. It is a big deal. Hmm. Also means you're old. It does. <laughs> I had a couple gray hairs pop up. I was like, whoa, Ugh. this is cool. This is cool. Wow, that's a different reaction than I had when my Like Mr. Up. Fantastic. I want that Mr. Fantastic. Man. Oh, I like that. That's pretty good. So what do you think it is about you of why you've been able to last, I mean, in the league so long mm. and then even with the same franchise for so long? Um, I'm not 100% sure. I'm, this is a total guess, so if I'm wrong, don't blame me. But uh, I think it's just the mindset and preparation I, I take. I just treat every year like it's my first year. I treat every rep like it's my last rep. You 
don't count the rips, make the rips count. That oh. sticks with me all the time. I like that. I think that's good. Um, what do you think has helped you in terms of most, in terms of that longevity, that consistency, your preparation, like you talked about? What are the things that you feel like you've done that have helped you get to that point? <sighs> <laughs> uh, let's see. It looks exhausting for you to remember. Because I, cause I don't even know. I, I do the same thing all the time. Uh, I eat the same stuff. I try not to stay up too late. I <laughs> watch my film. I don't know. And it's such a habit. I, I sit there and like, nah, my kids are older. They don't even talk to me until a certain time during the day because they used to me doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, but uh, I have no. Plus, I've been around a bunch of great guys and great coaches that's been able to give me things to sharpen my tools or add toolboxes into my toolbox. One thing I know that is different that you started doing is mm. you started taking jujitsu. Yeah. Oh, I guess that is a part of it. There you go. Jujitsu. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, tell everybody a little bit about what made you decide to start doing that. How you heard about it, and uh, yeah, just, it's a very, very <laughs> random. <laughs> thing for somebody to just take up mid NFL career. Okay, so I was at Bass Pro Shop and typical start to the story. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Bass Pro Shop, you know, trying to get in I was actually trying to get into fishing. <laughs> Not jujitsu. <laughs> um so I'm walking around and the sensei Cassio he says, uh, hey, you big guy. And I look though, I'm the biggest one. What? yes. He said, yeah. right now I could take you down like that. And I looked, I, I hesitated because he is he's not big. big as far as height. He's wide, he's like a bowling ball. But I looked, I said, I believe you, no problem. And then we <laughs> and tried to turn around and then and we laughed done. and joked around. And he said, no, man, come to the gym. I'll show you how to do some jujitsu. I'm a jujitsu guy. And I'll show you my pedigree of what I have. This dude brought in a book. I, I know we're on the radio. I'm going to try to give you, you think about a Webster's Dictionary. Yeah. Stack two of those together. That's all of his accolades. And I really sat there and read him. He was a phenomenal dude. SWAT guy, Brazilian black ops, trained people in Miami. I got there and he picked me up and slammed me so soft on the mat. I was like, I've got to learn how to do this. Because I felt so vulnerable and weak. I'm like, <laughs> You what? felt like the rest of us. Yeah, I'm like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, this is awesome. <laughs> He just picked, because he picked me up so fast. I'm like, man, I'm about to break something falling. And he's just slammed me so gently on the ground. I was like, wow. And that was when you knew you wanted to learn how to do this. That's when I knew in here. (laughs) So tell me what these uh, jujitsu lessons have done for you in terms of football. So it's actually helped me with my contact balance as far as being able to move around in, I would say, peculiar positions. The hand-to-hand combat is awesome. The grips and grappling. Uh, the stamina for sure, because trying to roll for a whole class is three hours. That's it's very breathtaking. Um, so it's the stamina, the hand-to-hand combat, just be able to have that contact balance, and I don't know overall confidence. I'm not, I've never been unconfident, but if somebody lock the arms with me, I know I can get their arms off me. We're talking to defensive lineman Will Golston. Uh, how much better are you at it than when you started, and what have been some of the uh, <laughs> most entertaining moments for you as you've tried to learn? I feel like I still suck, just to be real with you. <laughs> but I know I'm better. I still do the shadow rolling, but the actually when you choked me out. <laughs> Wait, that was one of your funniest moments? Because you choked me so hard. <laughs> I, was, I didn't think it was going to be that hard. Okay, Sorry. first of all, for people who haven't seen the video, I feel like this sounds very funny that like to hear that all of a sudden I had choked you out. And it makes it sound like you didn't tell me to do this. I would like to add that I didn't tell caveat. you to choke me that hard. Oh, I, stop I it. I thought it was just for the camera. Stop just it. A, you, that is such a lie. Oh, I, would, I still feel it. I, guess, <laughs> <laughs> I remember being terrified. I'm like, I'm going to somehow. And, <laughs> add, add Will on the IR and it's all my fault. So for people who don't know, if you want to see it on our Buccaneers YouTube, you can search The Bay with Will Golston. He taught me jujitsu, And obviously he's a good teacher because apparently I choked him out pretty good. He said specifically, I remember you said this, you were like, 
I'm gonna make you make me tap out. You can't just like pretend to do this. You have to actually choke me. And look at you acting mm. like you don't remember this. I might have, I might have. You know, have. we have it on video. That's the beauty of doing these things. You don't have to show me that quote. I did enjoy feeling like I was capable of taking down right. a 300 pound man. I had the opposite, for, where for you, you liked jujitsu because it made you feel vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I liked it because it made me feel invincible. Even though you were absolutely letting me do all those things, <laughs> that's not important. What's important important is that I threw a 300 pound man. That's all anybody needs yeah. to know. That was one of the most fun things I've done in a really long time. You drop kicked me to the ground too, didn't you? <laughs> you're you making did. this sound so you much worse. You did drop kick me to the ground. Again, I am okay with people thinking I can do that. You know, don't want, we don't want people messing with Gary. You know? <laughs> lean, can... mean fighting machine. Exactly. That's exactly who I am. Um, how about the idea of, when we talk about your longevity here, You've been in so many different systems mm. over your time here. Different coaches being asked to do so many things. And um, we actually talked to Todd Bowles in an interview and, and about you. And he m remembers the first time he saw you after joining here. Mm. And he asked you how much you weighed. And he asked if you could put some more weight on. And, oh, we're going to put you back in this system. And just talking about what you would need to do to fit into the system he had in mind for you. Yeah. Uh, so what has it been like to do, have to consistently change what you were asked to do, but then now to finally be in a system that resembles most closely what you did in college, maybe? It's fun. Uh, it's very, it's, it's easier to be able to say, okay, this is my weight. I know what I need to do. I know how I need to train. It's definitely a more stress-free life and uh, <laughs> as far as that, but, um, Going from all those different systems, I picked up so much information that I didn't know, like playing interior, playing outside, dropping, not dropping, and then coming with Coach Bowles, you got to do all of that stuff here. And uh, just having the opportunity to continue to play with him and for him, it's, it's great. And what do you like about him now as a head coach, that you had him as a coordinator, now as a head coach? and? Maybe even just how cool that is as a defensive player to, yeah, yeah, see, I knew. Every one of you guys that I've talked to, there is such a sense of pride yeah. in having a defensive coach be promoted to head coach. It's a defensive mindset. But I would say the best, I don't know if you all ever had the chance, but to hear him speak, because uh, he, he says he's not doing a speech. It's not necessarily a speech. He's just, you know, giving us a piece of his mind. But the speeches he has, either pre-game or the night before the game, are second to none. Ooh. Second to none. Now, and I'm talking, like, man, because it, it gets your juices flowing. It leads you to think deeper into the game and the game plan and the concepts that we need to go through. And it also is a little bit of challenging yourself to see how good you can be, at, not only as a player, but as a man as well. So if you ever get a chance to sit in on one of those, you'll you get some goosebumps. That's pretty cool. And so... For you, who do you feel like are the people on the team outside of him that give the best speeches, that get you the most fired up? The best speech I had from a player was from Tom before the Super Bowl. Yeah? I'm talking, I was ready to run through a wall. <laughs> Easily. I think everybody was ready to run through a wall, man. I can't tell you word for word what he said, but I know he said go out there and win. I know that's what he said. Yep. But Can we have him give this speech every game? I mean, it feels uh, like... I, I I don't know. That's like I felt like it was a once in a lifetime, mm. well not one, a once in a Super Bowl yes. type of uh, speed. It was crazy. It was nuts. I was like, man, because he hit every question you can question yourself about. He hit it, reassured you, mm. and you was ready to roll. That's amazing. Tom is motivational speaker. Man, it was it was great. Do I didn't. You, I haven't told him this either. Dang. I guess I should. I'm gonna tell him before he hears. You this. should. Yep. Yeah. Well, I I yeah I, I don't know that he listens to our show. <laughs> he so might. So I think you might have time. But you know, okay. we'll just assume he does. That this yeah. is required listening for him every week. Um, I think. So for you, have you given a speech at any point? I mean, you've been here a long time. <laughs> I did, but it, I don't think it was good. <laughs> oh no! When was that? Uh, they let me. This is why I don't think it was good. They let me speak for two games to the D-line and then to the offensive line and D-line when we broke. And I was like, hmm, they haven't asked me to talk. <laughs> that was Since it. Since then. That and was it, and you got fired. I sounded like Dr. Seuss. I was rhyming and stuff. Oh, my like, god! Yelling at the top of my lungs. I don't know. I might have spit out into my visor and all that, so. Yeah. Yeah. So should we maybe try this again? Should you ask no. again? No. You've decided <laughs> no. that wasn't your thing. I'm okay. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Um, so now I, 
I part of why I wanted you to come on this week is it was just the crucial catch game mm -hmm. on Sunday. And I imagine for you that's a particularly special game, fun game, you know, important game. Is that something you think about going into it or when you realize it is the crucial catch game and look around and see all of that? What what kind of impact does that have on you? It's a uh, it's a little warming. Uh like internally to see that the NFL takes the time to try to spread that awareness. Uh, seeing, you know, that my mom had the breast cancer, my father died of cancer, my uncle had, like there's so many people in my family who had cancer, but they didn't have the awareness to know, okay, we can go here, we can do that, we can screen for this, we can check for that. If I do have it, there's different steps, methods, and ways to try to fight it and combat it. So I always get excited because you just, Maybe that little bit of information or, all right, you see somebody see it go across the screen, you know, you think about it, oh, maybe I should try and get it checked out. And you may find something, you may not. But I think um, it's great. I mean, it's warming to me to know. It's reassuring. That's very cool. And yeah. I know that's something that's been an important um, cause for you that you, it's not something you just say, oh, that's nice. You've also yeah. done a lot in your own time. And I think... Um, Something I love about this team is how many of the guys do a lot of community work but don't tend to want a lot of credit for it or, you know, they're not very public about it. And <laughs> you are absolutely one of those guys, which it is a wonderful, the humility is a wonderful quality, but I also feel like it is something that we want people to know about you is that you are a guy who I feel like you have not gotten enough credit on the field for what you've done for this organization or off the field. And so that's what I want to give you a chance to talk about is the stuff that you have done off the field and how important that is to you when it comes to some of the cancer re research and, and what you've done in your spare time for that. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I usually don't think about it. It's not for me, but um, so now I, I work with Moffitt uh, Cancer Society. It's down here at the George Edgecombe Society that's specifically for uh, helping underprivileged people in the community, I already stutter over it, underprivileged people in the community, uh, spread the awareness, get them to know, get them to do screenings, get them the information that they need, maybe not necessarily want, and give them those resources that they can't get. Um, uh, what I did with their I donated for three different projects. One was for liver cancer, one was for pancreatic cancer, and the other one uh, was just a research program and I actually met somebody who did what they was researching to do uh, to, I don't know, is it okay if I explain it? Yeah, go so, for it. You, so I'm explaining how the doctor explained to me when I was sitting there to get the program and so they basically microdose the cancer cell and they get it to go really, really small, slowly but surely and it gets real small and then they stop and it grows back and they just shrink it again and it grows and it is working uh, for KJ. I, I wonder if he listened to this, but I met him. He's a friend of the family, and I was talking to him, and he had cancer. And I couldn't tell because he was walking around, didn't look like he was like, yeah, I just did my uh, chemo. He's in the gym where I'm training at. He's in the gym walking on a treadmill, and his son is there with him. I'm like, yo, you said you did what? Yeah. Yeah, and he was fighting and battling, and, I, and he just beat it not too long ago. That's like it went into remission. It was crazy. And it's part of the research program yes. that you have helped to yeah. fund. And I was like, yo, that's nuts. That has to be the craziest feeling. Gave me chills, man. Gave me chills. Gave me chills. Kendricks. Yeah, there you go. Case KJ's Kendricks. He actually used to play football, play for the Patriots. But um, yeah, man. And then now I'm actually working with the American Cancer Society as well now, trying to do the same thing, just spread awareness and all that. I will get nervous talking about it because I don't know, it's for the people who need help. It's not really for me. I don't need any recognition for it. Yep, that's why I give it to you, because you don't need it or, or anything, <laughs> but you deserve it. So, uh, all right, we're going to take a quick break here, but we have more coming up on Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest with defensive lineman Will Golston, brought to you by Frontier and Hooters. This is Buccaneers Radio. Welcome back into Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest. I am joined by defensive lineman Will Golston, and... Uh, you, we just, before the break, we're talking about all of the work you've done in the community and donating to cancer research. And I would just love to hear what that would have meant to you as a kid if you could have seen future will to know that you would be in a position to donate like that, hmm. to make a difference <laughs> like that in a community. Tell me what that would have been like or meant to you. Um, it would have been huge, to be honest with you, because 
growing up as I was a child, I didn't even know, and it might sound a little uh, dark, but I didn't know I was gonna make it to 18. When I got to 18, I didn't, make it, I didn't think I was making it to 21. But um, just to know that I have the ability and actually the moral compass to be able to help people, like seeing how I grew up and the person I had to be back then, it would have been awesome. It, I think things would have been easier. I, I said, I mean, I, I did what I had to do, but I think things life would have been easier knowing that I would turn out to be the type of man that I am today. You know, because if you knew who I was and you knew who I am now, you would definitely see the growth. So, so explain what what that growth is. Of explain a little bit about who you were as a kid or what your life was like and and why you needed that kind of growth to because again I like for people to get to appreciate <laughs> who, okay. who you are now and where you are now so I, I skip the I go right into adolescence so from I want to say 12 to 20 I was technically homeless so I, I either bounced around from friends house you know coaches stayed in the car yeah, got drafted, came here, and yeah, I went from having nothing to getting the NFL check. I was like, yo, but I never really shared the story about it because I figured, you know, let's not put my family in the light like that because I know it'll be way more questions. Even just saying that, like, it'll be a lot of questions to go that goes through with it. But I, I think I think it'll give a bunch of people some hope, you know, no matter what you're going through, you definitely can get through it if you got the right mindset, if you're willing to put the work in and keep going so yeah that's the gist of it I guess yeah. is that yeah. is that enough yeah all right, exactly. cool. whatever I you, no whatever you want to share is great and mm. I what was that like to all of a sudden have that NFL check and Ooh. then the lessons you had to learn I mean I, I think that the financial side of things is so interesting mm. and how do you feel like what are what are those lessons you learned and how did you grow in your decisions and <laughs> how, how to use it <laughs> um well the lessons I learned was uh now that I do help in the community, you have to pick a cause that you want to help. You can't necessarily help, here's money here, here's money there. You mm -hmm. pick a cause, something that, you, that really hits home, and you donate that way. Um, when you want to help someone, you make sure that they have a plan, and you have a plan as well, because stuff happens in life. It's going to be ups and downs, and you have to be able to put someone in the situation if they are uh, not financially stable, to be able to become financially stable. You can't be their ATM or their bank. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I used to buy some stupid random stuff as like just coming in. Like, give like me a, one thing. Like, give, give me one stupid or ridiculous purchase. I kind of used to, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had, uh, what is it, like retail therapy? I used to buy stuff for no reason, like cartoon figures. And they were super expensive, like $1,100 for a figurine that's like three foot tall. And I don't have any of them anymore. <laughs> they broke. Oh, no. Or I used to buy candles all the time. Like Stop. A, I, candles? Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> Scented candle. A new, I had a new fragrance every week. I cannot with this. If you had given me a million guesses of, <laughs> of what you spent your money on, I would never toys and candles. have gotten to, well toys. I, I think I would have gotten there okay. sooner. Candles that got me. I love candles. Scented candles are amazing. This is incredible. I'm just picturing you're the guy that has like the bath at night with all the super the, the, bubble the, bath the, to the to the throat. Because <laughs> I had a bathtub I could fit in. I used it. Every oh, night. what a thought! Take a shower, get in the tub, scented candles, some <laughs> R&B playing, man. You know. <laughs> I hadn't even thought about this. So Donovan and Tristan have a show together, and they've talked about big man struggles. Mm -hmm. We did that on the show when I had the, with Allie and Donovan as well. Uh, would the bathtub be your, your big man struggle that you would like to share? Or is there are there other ones you would like to vent about? There's so many big so man many struggles big man that, that can be covered. The bathtub, the pants, <laughs> the shirt that's either too big or too long. Mm-hmm. So many big man struggles. So many of them. It's, it's endless. It's, <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, how about looking at, we're talking to defensive lineman Will Golston. Um, we talked about the fact that you are one of the you know elder statesmen of the team mm -hmm, at this point. Mm -hmm. um, what has it been like for you watching some of these young guys get a chance to grow in this system and under Coach Bowles and, and all these young guys on the defense that have just come on like 
wildfire and made just huge strides, you know, helping win a Super Bowl in the years since. You know, what, what has it been like for you to watch some of them and tell us about what stands out to you about some of these young guys? I already told you how I felt about Antoine, but I feel mm. like a proud uncle or a proud big cousin watching these guys go out there and ball. So I told you how Antoine's swagger and confidence, mm-hmm. you, you can feel it and sense it. You can do the same thing with CD. You can do the same thing with Dean, even though Dean's really quiet. <laughs> That's one guy you guys got to talk to. He, we just did last did. week. Is it, is last it was week. He a trip? It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. He is such a trip. Uh, you can you can see the confidence in Devin. You can see the confidence in all the guys. Even the new Joe. Even the, the newer, the younger guys. You see the confidence. You see the swagger. And I think it's just because the fact that it's the respect level we all have for each other. So we come to work. You got to work. That's a, a given. Like, you have to put that work in. But once we see you consistently put the work in, we give you those pats in the back. We give you your flowers. And then you just go and flick that switch and they flicking the switch and they humming and it's beautiful to see <laughs> beautiful to be a part of I could brag about it all day but these guys are rolling and it's long while I'm going they're gonna be in the league and ball and I'm gonna be on the sidelines like let's go let's go <laughs> This is amazing. I lo- you just did sound like the the old grandpa. Like, <laughs> long long after I'm gone, these little whippersnappers. <laughs> yeah, cause I, I think when I look at Joe and he really he he's starting to get his mustache and goatee, <laughs> and I'm like, no way, Joe is super young, so young. And I look at Logan, I'm like, Logan, how old are you? Cause he's about the same size as me. So yeah, now I'm I'm young as ever. I used to be that. I used young. to be like that. You're a whole what? Over a decade older than some of these guys. Yeah. Yep. What has any? <laughs> <laughs> you look so sad. I'm even older than you, so it's okay. That's why I'm allowed to say these things. Uh, what are some of the? Has there been anything in terms of uh, almost generational difference there? Of like. It is. Yeah. <laughs> in the conversations I have with these dudes, I'm like. It's so unrelatable. I'm like, no, you wouldn't do it like this. Even though, so I was talking to Logan. I was messing around with him about this. Uh, he has a nose ring. And when I was growing up, I wouldn't have been able to get a nose ring. And we were talking about it and laughing and joking. I was like, yo, I just realized all my little cousins that's around the same age as him have nose rings in different periods. I'm like, yo, I guess it's it's really that 95 and up babies. They, they, they different. Them Gen Zers, you know? Man, they, they different. <laughs> This is amazing. Uh, how about uh, Devin and what he has meant to this defense mm. and the way you've seen him grow and mature these last few years? Devin, it's a lot. It's a lot to say about Devin. He is definitely a leader. He's very vocal. He's very confident. I love the confidence that he has when he plays and how he carries himself as a man. Um, you see him diving deeper into the playbook, being able to make those calls and checks quicker. You see his ten, like the tenacity he uses when he's playing. Like, if what's what's a good analogy I can use? I love that, that you, you love know? analogies. I, I, That's I, my favorite. I, you gotta give him an analogy. <laughs> I don't know why you you say you weren't good at the pregame speech. I feel like this, it's, it doesn't come out <laughs> like this. I'm, my emotions are run high. I'm I'm on level thousand during, during the game, but um, Devin. To me, I would say Devin is like that new Ferrari sports car. Mm. You got to see you You're going to see him. You're going to hear him. You're going to feel him when you're on the road. But everybody wants to be like him. I love that. Yeah. That, you get that. That's a good I analogy. I, I like that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and how about uh, getting them to welcome Akeem Hicks in here? It has been so unfortunate that he's been hurt yeah. lately. But prior to that, what did you see him bring to this defense and to the defensive line and what it's like to play alongside him? A nasty grit. He was a nasty, gritty player, you know, one of those punch you in the mouth. Look at you. So what? I did it. You know, that type of guy. I, I love that. I love his sense of humor, too. He's a cool guy, you know. That's what's so funny. He's just like we talked about with you earlier that like you're mean on the field and then mm-hmm. you're just delightful off of it. Akeem is the exact same way. I walked into the dining hall one day and he had on a Golden Girls backpack. Yeah. And I was like, this does not fit with what I just witnessed out on that oh, field. He is vicious and I love it. 
You can eat grunts sometimes. Like you can you can be playing and you hear <laughs> like what the is it a pit bull out here? A god darn grizzly bear. Oh my gosh. You I promise you, mic him up. You're gonna hear him. Oh, grunt. I can't wait. You're gonna hear him. Oh grunt. god, I'm so ready for him to play again. Me too. Yeah, I'm sure. Um and also your your other guy, Vita, we talked a little bit about him, but I had not brought up your unfortunate bet uh couple weeks ago. Yeah, man. So uh, tell people what you and Vita uh, wagered and what happened. I made this bet knowing wholeheartedly I was going to win. So I put all these stipulations onto the bet. Yes. But they were only for Vita to be wearing Michigan State gear. So we bet uh, to wear the opposite school's apparel. Right. I love these wagers because this is like what I can afford. Yeah. <laughs> this I'm, is I'm a wager I can no afford. Money. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we bet a hoodie. And you couldn't, you had to wear it from when work started until work ended. So Oof. I wore it to practice. Oh, first of all, the worst part of this bet is having to wear a sweatshirt at practice in Florida. It was a freaking up north winter hoodie. It was so thick. <laughs> I cut, he let me cut the sleeves off because I had to oh. kind of talk him into it. Yeah, you're like, I'm going to die for yeah. this bet out here. So I said, yo, man, I'm going to have to cut the sleeves. He's like, nope, that wasn't the part of the deal. Because I love... How, no mercy. Yeah, 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 you know. It's the, it's the fellas. Yeah. So he let me cut them off. So I had to dry the hoodie. I'm like, yo, I can't wear it. I, I got to dry it. So we threw it in the dryer. He gave me a dry fit to wear until the hoodie was done. Oh, you could not be in Washington gear. I was gear. in Washington gear all day. <laughs> you couldn't even get it out of it for the laundry. This is amazing. Uh, you know, And I bet he was very happy. Oh, it's not even that. It's just be the... The way he jokes, there's no way getting around it. You don't want to owe a man like Vita. <laughs> Trust me. Again, no mercy from him. <laughs> uh, I love it. We have one more segment coming up here on Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest with defensive lineman Will Golston, brought to you by Frontier and Hooters. This is Buccaneers Radio. Welcome back into our final segment here on Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest, joined by defensive lineman Will Golston. Definitely one of our more entertaining shows I think we've had <laughs> in a hot minute. There's been snarling. There's been all sorts of other things. Uh, how about we just talked about some of your uh, your fellow defensive guys? How about facing the offensive line? Tell me about going against guys like Hainsey and Gedicky and watching uh, them grow and uh, evolve so far this season. I like the way Luke's getting nasty out there. I don't know mm. if you've seen it. Uh, like last game, I saw him pushing a couple people over the pile, you know, driving a little bit after the whistle. I like that nasty yeah. stuff coming from an old lineman. Hainsey is extremely smart. He, I, I, I'm very confident when I'm at the center, he calls out all the mics. Even when he, we was playing against him, when he was kind of our scout guy, he definitely gave us a great look. But back to Luke. I think Luke's going to be nasty. He's, he's going to be a good guy. Like I getting that confidence under it. Like, that's all I feel like coming into the league. It's all about the confidence you acquire. And the more confidence he gets for every game, I'm pretty sure he's going to be able to lay it down and solidify that spot all the way. I like that. And uh, how about uh, watching Leonard Fournette run the ball whenever you were either going against them in practice? I know you're not really allowed to hit, mm -hmm. which has got to be a little frustrating at times. Every, it always looks like every run goes for a touchdown. Yeah. But, uh, going against him in practice and then just watching him run in the game, if you're imagining being the defensive lineman having to go against a guy like Leonard for a whole game, what, what would that be like and what does he bring? Because he doesn't look as big as he is, in my opinion. Like Leonard's a big, big dude. So I'm watching him running people over, running through tackles. I'm like, man, that has to be demoralizing. To know you got this dude dead to rights and he just run through you, you that's awful. And you see him doing it in practice. Like, you see him. I, I like the way he was uh, catching the ball. I was like, yo, yeah. he was catching everything, right? Yeah. Leading receiver for the team. I nothing, right? Oh, boy. 80 plus too. yards. There's a lot of wide receivers that, that don't get 80 plus yards in a game, you know? It's a lot. I know. And a tug. Got the tidy too. Did he had a rushing and a He had a, a rushing catching? and a catch. Yeah, it was crazy. He had himself a game. Um, how about for you, the toughest guys for you to go against that are not on our team? That when it comes to games, either it can be earlier in your career or more recently, just as you picture, if you're being told, like, oh, this is going to be a long day at work. When we played the Seahawks my rookie year, we went to Seattle. And I promise you, I hit Marshawn Lynch. As hard as I physically possibly, I, and I knew I hit him as hard as I could. And I turned my head, and I was on the turf, <laughs> and he was still running. I was like, ain't no way. 
There's no, no way, way in the world. There's no way in the world. So that was one wow. game. And then playing against the Raiders offensive line, my when they came here, we went to triple overtime. Like watching the film, you knew that they were gonna uh, be, you know, hard, yeah, hard fight. I got a lot of them, but I'm, I'll stop at those. You'll stop at those. Those are pretty good ones. Uh, who are some guys that you love watching at your position? And again, it can be either from when you were younger, mm -hmm. or it can be guys that are in the league now. Hmm. My favorite to watch. I gotta say, our defensive line easily. I, I love watching those guys. But, <laughs> uh, I, I like the way the Forrest Bunkner plays. He's a bigger man. He, he you know, big six, six five and up club. Uh, JJ Watt. When I was younger, even now he's still a beast. Um, who else? John Randall. I don't know why I was watching John Randall when I was younger, because we don't have that any of the same attributes, <laughs> but I like the way he played. He played so vicious and violent. Uh, Gerald, I still watch a little bit of Gerald's uh, now. I watch a little bit of Sue now as well. Hmm. I don't know why I'm still watching those guys, but I I like, I just like the way they play. Yeah, I like that. Um, how, how does, we're talking to defensive lineman Will Golston, how does preparing for a team look for you now, um, and especially maybe compared to early in your career, mm -hmm of when now let's say let's use this week as an example what will your preparation look like in terms of what you look for on film how much you watch what you focus on in practice what is that preparation like so when i get home today i start today i get home today i look over you the usual uh, formations or personnel groupings that i'm in the game with so i start off with 12 13 21 20 two personnel, watch all of those runs, play actions. Uh, then I think tomorrow I'm gonna watch how the offensive line and either their pressures or sacks they're giving up. Then after that, uh, we come back to work and do the same thing. But really it's just to sharpen it. No, I feel like there's nothing I'm gonna get ho at home that I'm not gonna get here, uh, especially with watching film with Case. So the film that I watch with Case, and the other defensive linemen, I go home and sharpen those things. Okay, this is what he said. Let me see if I can find this tendency on my own. Mm. Uh, you know, just look for those little things. That's incredible. So that's a lot of extra stuff outside even. It doesn't feel like it, but I guess it is. Yeah. yeah. To you, it's just this is what it's, you've always it's done. So, no, because when I was younger, I used to try to watch every single play, and that oh, was very, boy. very immature. No, don't need to do that. But um, I think you watch though, the personnel groupings that you know you're going to see the most. I feel like that speaks to why you've been so successful in, in this career is I feel like a lot of times when people talk about younger players, they say they didn't watch enough or they didn't prepare enough or mm -hmm. they didn't know how to, you know, and for you, it was that you essentially watched too much. Way too much. I yeah. Was, mine was spinning out there like, I oh, bet. man. But also, like, what a great problem to have that right. you were watching right. too much instead of not enough. Exactly. And like it's, it. that's part of how you were able to yeah. last here. Uh, Super lining right there. Look at the, yeah, see, that's, a, that's yeah. what we're all about here yeah. on the show. Um, so finally, just uh, one key for you looking ahead to this game against Pittsburgh. You, we got to come with everything we got. They uh, they lost the last game, it was, so you know they're coming in hot. Yeah. Got to give them everything we got. No, no holds bar. It's going to be fun up there. Yeah. I hope yeah. it's not cold. You're a Michigan you guy. You you can handle the cold. <laughs> a little Vaseline, I'd be all right. A little Vaseline. Well, Will, thank you so much for joining us. This has been an absolute blast, and uh, good luck this week. Thank you. And thanks for all of you guys for tuning in. This has been Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owl's Nest, brought to you by Frontier and Hooters. This is Buccaneers Radio.